Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at the Marco Polo. Uh, Marco Polo is, of course, a ship that was introduced in 10.2 for, I think, 228,000 coal. My build that I chose to use in this game is on the screen, and I wanted to share this game because it was absolutely an amazing game. Back and forth. It was one of those blowouts that everyone's honestly dealt with a lot. Uh, so as far as the build is concerned, main armament protection, lower chance of flood and fire, improved gun accuracy, faster rate of shift, concealment, better rate of fire. For the commander, incoming fire alert, faster turret traverse, a drill and rush, concealment, fire prevention, dead eye, and the tier three anti-air skill that enhances your priority sector. Uh, I've tried this build. It's similar to the GK build from uh, a couple days ago. And uh, it honestly works very well to improve the accuracy of inconsistent ships. And I think most people will understand that the Italian battleships are inconsistent. So I wanted to take it out in this game and, uh, oh, that wasn't good. Right off the bat, we lose a friendly to a torpedo send at sea point. And I felt immediately like I had no chance because I mean, it's less than three minutes in the game. We've already lost one of our four uh, DDs. That's a big deal. You, you don't want to do that early. And uh, the more that that occurs, the less likely you are to win the game. So I was just really frustrated by that. And on top of that, there's a cruiser, Algeri, who is also very far forward. So this is very hairy. Uh, so I'm just trying to contribute anything positive on this flank. And uh, we get an enemy DD that shows up. And then we're going to fire off some sap. Unfortunately, though, the DD is close enough and he is detecting us that Deadeye wasn't active for that shot. Uh, but we do land a shell that does almost nothing because, unfortunately, sap for battleships is fairly weak against DDs. It's capped at 10% damage output. You really don't want to fire sap or AP for that matter, at a DD. Both of those shells are capped at 10% of their maximum damage. You really want to try and go after everyone else. But having said that, even if you can only land your shells on a DD, it's still a positive contribution. You're just not going to wipe it out completely. And we did a good job against this enemy Akatsuki, uh, who is attempting to maybe ambush the Algeri, and uh, I'm just trying to be here to try and stop this from happening. Uh, while all this is going on, there's a New Orleans that's coming around on the north side. Enemy Bismarck as well seems to be coming around. Uh, so I felt like, you know what? We can actually go at this New Orleans. He is being way too aggressive. He thinks that my team is going to run and hide in the same area of the map. That's not how I play. I try and spread the map out so that it's a better opportunity for crossfire and also spreading out for torpedoes. You don't want torpedoes to be too effective and grouping up into one little ball on the map. That's the quickest way for torpedoes to punish you. So I felt like, you know what? New Orleans is not a big deal. He doesn't have torpedoes. Yeah, I don't have smoke. I can't disengage if I was over pursuing, but I don't really feel like I'm going to over pursue. So we got sap loaded. And uh, notice that the New Orleans, he's not having any camouflage. He doesn't need it. He's uh, going to do just fine without it. And of course, sap, huge amount of damage. And because this is 406, I can actually overmatch him. So I'm going to switch to AP knowing that there's pretty much no way he can stop this. Uh, clearly the map is not going well while this is happening. But this has to happen, so I don't have any other priority, and I'm going to wait out the New Orleans life before I put out the fire. Yeah. Predictably wiped him out. <laughs> AP out the waterline. And, of course, using my damage control. Uh, I always have to answer this. Oh, you, you put it out for one fire. Why'd you put out for one fire? The reason I put out for one fire is it's probably going to be a minute before I get another fire set on my ship based on how I sail and based on the targets that are actually in the area. Like, if the Bismarck wants to fire high explosive at me, be my guest. It does really crappy damage. It has good penetration, 
but it is not optimal. So, you know, I want him to try and see if he can do that, honestly. Uh, I'm going to return fire with beautiful sap for 14,000, which is great. But we really need to try and work our way back towards the center of the map first, then work on this Bismarck. He is so far away from anything that could possibly contribute to his team's success. Whereas something like the Georgia, he is punching right through the center of the lines on my team. And he really needs to be taken out or at least damaged enough that he's going to pull back. And uh, I can't explain to you how frustrating it is when players will just exist in their own world, in their own binoculars, farming damage on a target that is honestly not a threat to you right now. And leaving super strong, you know, like center of the entire enemy fleet's actual attack alive and kicking and, and allowed to do whatever he wants. So, of course, I'm going to try and focus on this guy. We did get pretty good damage. Uh, we are sustaining some shell fire from the sign up, but I am going to try and angle my ship. The nice thing about the Italians, they got really good armor on the outside of the ship, more than enough, if angled, to cause ricochet and very well uh, protect. So, obviously, enemy Georgia, still the primary. Guns have reloaded, and we do end up firing on him. We unfortunately missed the location. The location needed to be more towards the center of his ship. He is a Georgia, though. He has speed boost. He probably threw off the aim that I at least attempted. And then we get punished by the sign-up. Great punish by the sign-up. And look at this guy. He avoids all but one torpedo. Can't believe it. And while all this is going on, man, the enemy is just pushing into us. There is a DD that is shadowing, keeping me spotted just in front of the enemy Bismarck. 46, of course, capturing A. Going to try and shoot at him. And he was kind of broadside to our position, so I was expecting that, oh yes, here we go. He sent his torpedoes, and they all appear. So I just have to eat it. I can't do anything at this point. And it unfortunately actually knocked out our propulsion, so definitely need to use our damage control. But he is perfectly broadside for a really healthy sap broadside. And New Orleans follows up, finishes him off. Enemy Bismarck, he has the angle. The sign up has the angle. This is just not going well. Not at all what I wanted in this game. I felt like, oh man, we're not going to be able to get away from this. We're just going to die. So let's get as much damage as we can. Enemy sign up, of course, fires on my position. I drop my speed and turn away from it. Throws off the AP shells. Really effective maneuver, even at this range. While this is going on, enemy Bismarck shooting me in the back. Uh, backstabber. Uh, and then on, on top of that, there is a DD that is absolutely interested in sending torpedoes. Uh, so the technique, if you ever are in a situation where your team's dead on your flank, or it's the primary flank of the enemy, you need to try and just disengage. Uh, you don't want to try and just soldier on and do a, a holdout situation where you're bow in. You're going to die so much faster than if you were to angle and retreat. Because I'm angling and retreating, I can fire on less angled ships or ships that are more on my broadside, the enemy sign up, so we can contribute positively, even though we are moving away from the Bismarck, who, of course, he is just interested in pinning us. But he doesn't have the gun caliber, and we have too much armor on the outside at this angle. So as long as he doesn't hit the superstructure, he pretty much can't pin anything. Easier said than done. And, of course, we just have to survive. Because the enemy is very persistent in their pursuit of perfection in this game. They are just pushing constantly. We get a nice, healthy, sap broadside. Very nice. Uh, we needed that ever so slightly presented just enough that we could punish it. Friendly Colorado getting hugely punished by the large caliber that Sinop carries, also 406. Really just need to kill him, and he does. Does he kill himself, though? Oh, no, no. He's still alive. Uh, but the friendly, seemingly, oh, he's taking fire, I think, from the Bismarck. I hope he doesn't die. 
Uh, Bismarck takes torpedoes from a friendly though, which is nice, and of course we return fire with sap, but does nearly 10,000 damage. The best thing about sap is just how chunky it is. But we are so far away from anything on the map, this cannot stand. We have to get back into the match. Otherwise, even if we kill every ship on this flank, there could be two or three that retreat and they could still win the game. So I am very aware that I can't afford to continuously give ground to the enemy. And oh, we get such a fortunate shot there. The enemy DD, he doesn't move out of the area and our sap finishes him off. Really needed that kill. From the Colorado, looks like he's taking damage from the Bismarck. Unfortunately, it finishes him off. But it does mean that I didn't take fire from that Bismarck, and I can return fire, and hopefully we can do some damage, and oh, we lose another one here. Just was looking bad, really, really bad the whole time. The enemy did such a good job of pushing into our base, and our team collectively did a really poor job of stopping it, uh, save for a couple players. Uh, still maintaining good angle. Marco Polo actually has pretty good gun angles, so it's not doesn't feel vulnerable when it's returning fire and taking fire like this. Uh, we do have dead eyes, so because we were able to drop off detection, we got really good accurate shot to follow up on the Bismarck, and he takes a torpedo, which I do believe the torpedo is flooding him out, so he might die just to the torpedo, and he is in desperation to get damage on us, and it does look like he does put out the torpedo. He stops it from flooding him, but our guns are reloaded. And there's no way he's going to avoid this. Because we've got the shot accuracy and the location. We just need to send it downrange. See you later, enemy Bismarck. And we're still alive. We got three kills, 127,000 damage done. Enemy, though, has three bases to our one. So we really need to just push into all of the available bases and attempt to retake. Uh, even if we retake, I don't know that we can win this game. It might have taken a little too long to mop up the enemies that pushed in, but we're going to make an effort. Uh, one nice feature of the Marco Polo that is a standout trait, it is very fast. Probably the only faster battleship at this tier is, of course, the Iowa. Uh, but this is so much faster than most battleships. It really keeps up with cruisers. So it can make a situation very similar to this work very well almost every time. Uh, any battleship that's pursuing you, say for the Iowa or a Marco Polo, they're going to fall behind. That Bismarck, he attempted to, you know, potentially, oh, we got a sap shell on the shore, so I was trying to kill him. Wasn't enough to kill him, and I don't know if he'll ever allow us to see him ever again, because that was very close for him. Enemy cruiser is coming up to try and contest with the Chappie. We really need to retake every single base, and I'm just trying to get in a position where my shells can hit him. Of course, um, as you should, this is not breaking news to anyone, but it's, of course, what needs to happen in order to have a chance. And we do get a nice broadside on the enemy cruiser, but he drops off. And we still haven't captured B-Point because the enemy is contesting. They're doing a great job. The Chappie really just needs to give up trying to capture B and pull back. We can't afford to lose him at this point. Honestly, we couldn't afford to lose the two or three other ships that we lost earlier, and we're just trying to make something good out of a bad situation. So I'm trying to come as quickly as I can down towards this enemy cruiser, and I'm trying to detect him and take away any of his retreat paths, because the shores, I really don't have any chance of catching him. It would I would really need my DD to rush towards him and just detect him. That's not really going to happen, though. Let's face it. Most teammates, at this stage of the game, most of your teammates, they probably have never been in a situation like this. They don't really know what to do, because they've never done it. So you can't put too much expectation that they're going to know exactly how to win this game. And because of that, I am trying to communicate exactly what's happening. Uh, and, of course, teammates are doing a good job of capturing the base. Chappie is pulling back. Uh, the Akatsuki on our team on the north side. Hopefully he can go capture Seapoint. Uh, but you can see the enemy has about four minutes and uh, they're already at 900 points. But our teammate does a great job. He actually spots the enemy cruiser as he was retreating. 
We ended up taking the perfect path because it was the shortest distance to him. So as long as my guns aren't having to deal with the island, we can fire, and of course we do. Uh, this should be a good shot because it was a good shot. It was right on target, thanks to Deadeye and thanks to, obviously, our shot location. And that's going to help us a little bit bring down the point total on the enemy. Uh, we still need to capture every remaining base. And there's three minutes and 30 seconds left. Even if we capture these bases, I don't know that we can win this game. I think we just spent too much time trying to work through the enemy. And uh, I don't know what else my teammates were doing. The ones that weren't doing that. It just felt like they were just laying down and letting the enemy do whatever they wanted. And I don't like that. Clearly. I'm not going to lay down. Uh, but teammates doing a good job capturing C. That is the priority. He can't go trying to detect the Shores. I can't imagine that the Shores is anywhere close to the engagement. I'm sure he's sailing off to the edge of the map and probably going on vacation. Uh, the other remaining ship is an enemy DD that was last spotted over by Sea Point, but clearly he's not there. Enemy uh, well, friendly Friesland is attempting to capture the enemy's base, which of course stops the progression of their cap. Absolutely, which we needed. Uh, there's 2 minutes and 35 seconds left. Uh, I, we really desperately need every base captured. And honestly, I would feel more comfortable with one extra kill. And I'm trying to communicate to the DD that he definitely could afford to try and spot this guy. I have my guns positioned. I'm ready to shoot. Um, because I'm not confident that this game is going to be a W. I'm just not... We spent way too much time trying to survive, and I think the enemy team did a great job of capturing our base. They even tried to capture A point. They, they went absolutely insane. And, uh, oh, looky there. Enemy is attempting to stall a little bit D point. Now, I don't know why the Friesland is afraid of this guy. If we go two versus one, it should be an easy d kill. I'm a little annoyed that he pulled back so extreme. I have to do this completely blind. If a torpedo comes from my starboard side and wipes me out, that's just what happens. But we need this base captured. We can't even have it contested. Uh, so I really hope that this Friesland decides to move forward. Now, the enemy didn't like that I got too close, so he decided to retreat. He also sent torpedoes, and I think he expected me to go left when he sent them. So, of course, I didn't go left, and they harmlessly passed by the ship. And I think this should be enough to win the game. The tick rate is going up rapidly, and uh, I we're getting, what, four points every time it ticks up, and we're quickly catching up to the enemy's 895 point total. I think we're going to win this game. I can't believe we won this game, and I was really happy with the Marco Polo's performance in this game. It felt really, really powerful. We were top tier, uh, and the Georgia was also the top tier of the enemy team. So both of the tier 9 battleships really were a force, and I just, you know, survived just a little bit longer. And uh, it was just enough to win this game. And we're going to tick over with, what, 15 seconds left? 17 seconds left. We were behind for 19 minutes and 45 seconds. So it feels good to get the W. It was way too close and way too tense, but you know what? That makes this game even sweeter, and hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing the Marco Polo. I know there's players and CCs and others who aren't as excited over it, but I certainly am, and clearly you can see why. So four kills, 140,000 damage done, Confederate. Marco Polo, definitely a force for the team, and uh, just happy we got the W. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like it. If you dislike, dislike. Uh, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, we do World of Warship videos, first impression, how to, news, and review. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you and have a wonderful day.